In the last video, we took a look at buzzers, both passive and active, how they work, how you can use them, and how you can get multiple tones out of them, and even play songs through an active buzzer, despite the fact that active buzzers can really only play a single tone. And in this video, we're going to program an Arduino to create multiple tones using a buzzer and even play a little bit of music. So to get started, you're going to want to have the gamepad files from GitHub on your computer already. Open those up, go to the simple graphics template. We're going to make a copy of this. We're going to rename this as Buzzer Tones. Press enter. Now we're going to open this file up in the Arduino editor. And when it comes up with this message saying moving, just click OK and the project will reopen with the base template. Now, generally the way you would generate a tone on a buzzer using an Arduino is by using interrupts, specifically using the onboard hardware timers to create pulse width modulation. Fortunately for us, we don't have to do this for this program because there exists a function in the Arduino core called tone. And you can see here that the tone function takes in two to three parameters, the pin, the frequency, and an optional duration. So to test this out, we're gonna to go to the setup function under the display setup, make a new line and go tone for buzzer 1500. Now we'll upload the program and you should hear it play a tone. So what we programmed the Arduino to do is to play a, on the buzzer pin, which is pin nine, play a 100 Hertz tone for 500 milliseconds. This is in general how you get an Arduino to play tones on either a speaker or a buzzer. And we can change up these numbers a bit. For example, if I change this 1000 to 500 Hertz for let's say one second and upload it, you'll hear a lower pitch tone play. But now watch what happens if I put two tone functions one right after the other. And I'll make this one a higher pitch and then upload it. And what you might expect is to hear two tones, but in fact, all we're gonna hear is a single tone. The reason I didn't play both notes is because the tone function is what's called a non-blocking function. This means that the tone function, when it's run, does not actually pause and wait for the tone to finish before it moves on to the next line. So what's happening in the code is it's running the first tone function, getting that set up and starts outputting the tone, but then immediately goes to the next tone function, which overrides the first tone with this value. So in order for this to output both tones, we need to have something in here to pause the execution until the first tone is finished playing. And in this case, we can use a delay function. So between the first and second tone, I'm going to insert a delay that's equivalent to the length of this tone here. So 1000 milliseconds. And now when I upload it, you'll hear both tones play one after the other. But now what if we want to play some music? Since we have the ability to play multiple notes for different time lengths, we can now create a song that can play on the Arduino. And all you have to really do is go in here and add in notes and delays and do that for each note of the melody you're trying to make. But as you can see, it gets pretty unwieldy the longer you go with this. There's a lot of repeated code and a lot of typing that you have to do that you really don't have to do. Instead, a better idea is to create a function that will take care of both the note and the delay every time you call it. To do that, I'm gonna create a function called playtone, which takes an unsigned integer as the frequency and an unsigned long as the duration. The function then passes those arguments to the tone function as well as the delay function. But I'm gonna go a step further and add another argument into this for the rests. And in this case, the rest is just added on to the delay function. And right now I'm gonna set the default rest to 10. So now we can use the playtone function when we want to output specific tones. So to test this out, I'm going to use three specific frequencies for three different notes just to make a very simple song. And when you upload it, you'll hear this. Of course, making more complicated music is harder. Firstly, I'll identify the notes of the song I want the Arduino to produce. Next, I'll start converting the notes that I need into frequencies. And finally, after a bunch of trial and error, I can make calls to play tone to produce something similar to the original song. The result isn't perfect or even really that pleasant to listen to, but the overall goal with this video was to show you how you can get a buzzer to produce a series of tones, including music. If you'd like to make this song on your Arduino, I'd like to invite you to pause the video here and just copy the note definitions along with the calls to play tone, and you'll have the same song I do. And you might even be able to improve it a bit. So go make some music, and I'll see you in the next video. If you want to learn more about electronics, check out the GamePad Quest, which is a DIY electronics adventure where you not only get to build your own video game controller,
but you also get to program and design a video game. Now, as you go through that, you get a variety of instructions and training videos that allow you to go on a variety of side quests and learn how to use all the components in your kit. You get to build video games on a breadboard. You will get to solder up your own video game console, and you will get to install and upload multiple games that have been adapted to the gamepad quest. Not only that, but we'll teach you how to design your own printed circuit board so that you can start modding and designing your own video game systems. We'll teach you how to control a pixel on a screen, how to program your own video game music, Go and visit our website and learn more about this hands-on learning adventure where you get to do everything you ever dreamed of all in one single electronics kit.